a long 14th the par 5 and had a double bogey here's Brad Hughes another former Masters champion six past Masters champions playing here a beautiful shot from Brad Hughes Barry Vivian Mark O'Meara Peter Senior Craig Parry and Brad Hughes and of course champions Australian Open champion Brad Hughes to open his round with a birdie. Putting at the first. Get in. Got it. And it's good to see you go back in some good form. Uh, just struggled a little bit in the States and uh, started to put it all together last week at the Australian. Beautiful swing. Today, my life, and that was necklace in his heyday. <laughs> Brad Hughes, past winner. An iron off the tee at the fourth. And there is. Coming behind. Uh, trees down the right hand side. And just sneaks by, sneaks by, and you can see where he's going, I think. Cut the corner a bit tighter than he might have planned. That's a dog leg that goes about 90 degrees. It's a real dog leg. Yeah. His, his difficulty there will be to. Very steady player. Probably, I'd have to say, uh, a man with enough talent to win a major. Hasn't done that yet. He's won 14 times on the US Tour, but never won a major. Brad Hughes. Four. Bit right off the tee. Fashioned a pretty good shot to get it on the green. That for par. Interesting putt that, though, Jack. I mean, the whole green slope sort of down towards the front bottom left-hand corner mm. as you come up. And that one sort of almost like an electric bray went the other way. <laughs> It certainly fooled him. Seven in Sydney, and uh, so finishing the job off once again is, will be his criteria this week. Brad Hughes tied for eighth last week in the Greg Norman. Rounds of 71, 71, 69, 69. After missing the cut by a shot the previous two weeks. This for a good start today. Two under. Brad Hughes driving at the sixth. Got off to a nice start. Birding the first and has just birded the fifth, so he's two under for the day. Peter Senior is playing with is one over. Peter O'Malley level par. And all these latter groups are they looking poor by comparison with those who finished already. High above Brad Hughes and at the sixth hole he's two under after five and he's having a crack at this par five. Trying to bring it in from left to right off the left-hand bunkers. And it's a pretty good shot from Brad Hughes. Well, better than pretty good. Yeah. And uh, Westford almost having a battle for last place at the moment. Brad Hughes from the throat of the green at six, playing a little bump and run shot. Be good. A very good shot good example there that even these top players they don't always use their wedge or sand wedge classic example there of a straighter face club Brad Hughes has this for a birdie to go to three under and, uh, the player who's got on his CV a win at Huntingdale in the Masters can never be discounted Nicely done. Lovely little chip and run, old-fashioned golf shot. He goes to three under through six holes. And again, evidence of someone who played quite well last week, bringing that form to Huntingdale. A different sort of course. It was on a much tighter, faster running. But at the same time, good, quick, but a little too greedy over those first very short, narrow opening holes. Now, this is Brad Hughes with his second shot into the seventh green, another par five. Hasn't dropped a shot yet today. Three birdies. And, uh, finding the beach. At the seventh. Easy to do that. Uh. You can tell that was a while ago. Greg Norman using a wooden club. 
very old hat as we join Brad Hughes with his third shot and a beauty like Peter Senior share of 11th place 71 on the last day just a shortish putt and Brad Hughes gets his birdie too to go to four under three birdies in a row for Brad Hughes so that could be a turning point for Frank Novolo Bradley Hughes for a buddy. Oh, well, old five. The former winner, he moves to five under par. Brad Hughes at nine, uh, getting his buddy. Can One that both Coltart and Brad Faxon had trouble with. He got it on the green, the others hit the lip of the bunker. Brad Hughes with his second to the ten. That's the, that fairway bunker on the left hand side and uh, fortunately they didn't go too far into the trees and uh, he too will be putting for an eagle when he gets up to the green here's Bradley Hughes at the tenth this for an eagle three he's already five under and that will be another one it's, uh, and beware the man who backs himself he was 50 to one when he won three four years ago and he had a, a bit on him and he sent another stab at himself this time at 20 to 1 so he must be quite confident finished well last week with a pair of 69s over the weekend for a top 10 finish but six under through 10 it's excellent if he can hold on to that for the day he'll be doing very well indeed and a man who knows Huntingdale which runs down to the lower part of the green so Devonport could end up taking four or five Brad Hughes putt for a birdie from the right hand side of 11. Big swing from right to left. All right for distance, but uh, rather misjudging the break. Great to see him back in good form. One of the best uh, strikers of the golf ball on our tour. Qualified in the US Tour School, so he'll be able to play more events over there this year. And having had a look at a lot of the courses, he might go a lot better. Brad Hughes. I saw him putt from the right edge of the green. This for par. Rock solid. Impressive round from Brad Hughes. Much left from the tee. Now Brad Hughes for a birdie at the 12th to go 7 under. Yes, good. Yes, he's got it. Great two for Hugo. Well, he won the title in 1993, and he was second to Craig Parry in 1996. What a round for Brad Hughes. Seven under. Par five to come after this. And he's close again at the 13th. Yeah, while he's not as close as Peter Senior, I think he did much rather have his putt than senior who's putting down there it's seven under well we saw his second shot off tape here he is this to go eight under par nope. very good strike of the ball brad used I think now he's got his card in the US, he's had a taste of it. He's got the golf game, uh, providing the, the flat stick, the putter works. He'll do well, I think, in, uh, this year in the United you know. States. Brad Hughes, he comes to this par five with a very realistic chance of another birdie. And if he gets to eight under, he'll be tied for the lead. And he's absolutely smashed that down the middle of the fairway. That's in excellent shape. With his length, I would suggest he can get very near the green in two. Now, Brad Hughes, we saw him reach the green in two here at the 14th. And this for a birdie, and Brad Hughes joins the lead. I think, as you say, down here, and uh, well, we've seen in the last uh, half hour some pretty useful tee shots coming up just short of the pin, but on the right level. 
You don't want to be on the left-hand side of the green today because that's on the lower level when Frank Nobolo we saw putting up the hill to the pin. Peter Senior has had a hole in one here in the past. Oh, what a useful shot there, Jack. Boy, this is a round of golf he's playing. Eight birdies in the first 14 holes around this golf course is some golf, particularly this afternoon when the breeze is up. Almost flew that right in the hole. I'd go along with you with that. Uh, it's a marvellous. It really is quite breezy out there. The temperature's dropped a little bit. And here he is for some more good play and all but. And he hasn't held every putt he's had by any means. But what, with what confidence he'll go into tomorrow's round when he'll go out and know that he's got a great opportunity to slip the field. And, and he'll be earlier tomorrow. And if it's a similar sort of day... Great round by Brad Hughes. Here's Jeff Flanagan. Thank you, Drew. Beautiful, beautiful score from Hughes here. Coming up 16. And the course record, of course, needing another birdie to, uh, to equal the course record. And safely in the fairway, setting himself up with a good attack at the flag here. Amateur. Brett should get his four. Now, this is some round of golf. Brad Hughes at the 16th. Looks as though he likes it. Seven iron in his hand and oh, perhaps not as good as he might have hoped. This really is the last possible birdie opportunity. Short half or the last two. Very There's good. no sense in this game, Bruce. It's cruel, <laughs> isn't it? It is, it is. Bradley Hughes at 17 for a birdie. Has it got the legs? Has it got the legs? It certainly had the line. And, of course, the final hole. Sorry, I'm back to 16. Right in a minute. Of course, his day is done, and we can bring it up. <laughs> Hughes. It's 188 for Hughes there, but he's attempting to cut it in and got over the top of it. It's yeah, it's heading back towards the flag, but it always looks as though it's going to head left early. A good shot from semi-rough, really. Sensational. Must have been a gurgly, Jeff, was it? I think it was, Jack. It started left and uh, then cut back against the wind. Right. This is an important one here. This to get him nine under. Remembering that that's the course record. He's currently held jointly by Langer, Clayton and Lucas Parsons. He's got it. Oh. What a round of golf this has been. Well, if he can man manage another one at the last, he'll have the course record on his own. 63, yeah. Yes, it's that sort of time of the day, though. You become aware of these things and almost reach for the oxygen mask. It's, uh, it's a wonderful performance. And he's, you know, there's been... A couple and of welcome to Huntingdale. Well, as you can see, some of the greatest names in the world game have graced the fairways here at Huntingdale over the 20 years of the Masters. But I tell you what, if a lot of those international stars had been here this week, they mightn't have been in front because the golf we saw yesterday was absolutely unbelievable and a new course record went, one, went to one of our locals. Let's take a look at the highlights of yesterday's outstanding day one. Round one was dominated by Australian players and one Scott. Raymond Russell was back in the clubhouse at eight under the card and feeling pretty happy with himself. An opening round of 65 in a major championship. Catch me if you can. Matthew Goggin and Stuart Appleby heeded the call. Both finishing the day just one shot behind Russell. Enter 1993 Masters champion Brad Hughes. He opened with a birdie on the first. Then picked up shots at the fifth, sixth, 7th and ninth to go out in 32. On the way home, he started at the 10th with yet another birdie. Again at the 12th, 14th. And then on the last two holes, he played some great golf. A course record 63 at 10 under and a two-shot lead into today's second round. Not far off the pace, former champ Marco Mira, Robert Allenby and Mark Brooks. Day two. 
20 years of the Masters. The tradition continues. And the leaderboard as it stood yesterday after the opening 18 holes, Brad Hughes, he birdied the last two and the southerly wind had got up so the birdie into the breeze at the 18th last night was a phenomenal hole and he too. Let's take a look at some highlights and here is the overnight leader, Brad Hughes, on the second hole. He came out of the trees and onto the green. Just very difficult to keep that momentum going. He must have been pumped up last night. Yeah, well, as my dear old dad used to say, that, uh, you know, the law of averages uh, works against you. When you've made ten birdies in one round, surely, uh, you know, there's not going to be too many around for the next day. Uh, given that most of these guys, when they're playing well, make five or six birdies a day, he's at a double hit in one round. So, not an easy task to come back after shooting 63 to follow it up with another good round. But Brad, at 31 now, he's had a lot of experience, a very good player, uh, and probably, I'd have to say, uh, a little bit of an underachiever. I'm not sure that he really believes how good he really is. And uh, if he can win here and get back to the States, uh, full of confidence, he's had one season there, he knows what to expect. And this was his second shot, his uh, shot rather at the third. So having dropped the shot at the second hole, this to get it back at the third. And his bogey at the second today was his first bogey of the tournament. The one question mark about Brad Hughes' game, there's no question about his ball striking ability. It's the putter. He's had a go with the long putter and he's back to the short one, a bit like Peter Lonner. And I suppose uh, one would have to suggest there is a slight mental weakness there. Once again, he got the good conditions. He teed off at two minutes to nine today and with already 10 under on the board, it had been licking his chops at the prospects for today. This was his birdie putt at four. Sure, I'm amazed how similar the conditions are. Uh, totally different golf courses, of course, to last week and this week. Today, uh, we're coming to the course, it was cloudy, overcast, no breeze. Just made for good scoring, but, gee, the score these fellows are shooting is just mind-boggling. Without the humidity of uh, last week in Sydney. And back to Brad Hughes. In trouble from the tee here at six. This is his third shot. And remember, this is where you make your score at Huntingdale. Six and seven, both par fives. And when you're on song, you get birdies at both these holes. Brad Hughes, not really in birdie range here at this 518 metre par five sixth. Just for a birdie, but he, he'll have to uh, satisfy himself with a par. Disappointing because he would have come to these uh, two long holes thinking, well, here I go, birdie's here. Just one under after six. I like that, it's very tough, too. <laughs> oh, phenomenal shot for Darren Cole. Now here's Brad Hughes at the seventh. Another par five. Disappointment at the previous par five. And he's cut that, Jack. Yeah, he's um, lost it to the right into the bushes. And both these par fives, they are birdie holes, but if you get offline, boy, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Here he is with his fourth shot from the trap coming from the bushes. A little long. So, in danger of dropping a stroke here at the par 5 7. He did say last night that he'd always played the front nine here at Huntingdale worse than the back nine. And, uh, but he'd have to be disappointed with the way he went through those two six members. So, Frank, 70 yesterday and 7 under for the round today as we watch. Brad Hughes, second shot to the par 5 tenth. This is normally pretty much a gimme birdie for these guys, particularly if you can get the ball on the fairway. Excellent shot from the overnight leader. That putt for an eagle three at the par 5 tenth. And here is the putt for the eagle. And after missing chances at six and seven, he'd love this to go in. Oh! Well, a rock solid birdie. I like the way he's putting. His uh, putting stroke looks rock solid. Back to 11 under. One under today. Now Brad Hughes at the par 4 11. Off the green, putting for par. And in! Well, a bit up and down today, but one under. It hasn't rolled. As sometimes they do a long way to the right. Now Brad Hughes for a birdie at the 14th, this long par 5.
and this for a share of the lead. Yes. It's been a good comeback because he was a bit shaky early. We saw him uh, in our highlight package struggle at six and seven in particular after dropping an early stroke. And uh, I think that bears testament to the good frame of mind he's in, Bruce. Yes, and uh, which we saw right at the beginning of the week when he did often announce that you've backed yourself uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the world in public, and he did it. But we'll see O'Malley now. Who and welcome back to Huntingdale, where Brad Hughes is at the 15th, the par three. Sharing the lead with Goggin. And that was off tape a few moments ago. Now here we are, Brad Hughes' birdie putt at the 15th. Welcome to South Australian viewers. That's the ball of Brad Hughes with a birdie putt at the par 3 15th. He's been joined in the lead by Tasmanian Matthew Goggin, who was second out today and followed 66 with a 68 to be 12 under. Hughes, who broke the course record yesterday with a 10 under 63, has two under for the day and up to be two over. Shot of Huntingdale from the Whitman's Lightship. Now Brad Hughes. Pass the par three, 15th. Steve Conran today, 72. He's one under. Danny Vera, can he win this year? Now back to the overnight leader at the 16th. Brad Hughes, good tee shot. Excellent tee shot, Jack. He's got nine on in hand. He's 122 metres out. Just needing somebody to kickstart these final three holes in this uh, second round. And he's pushed that just right at the play. that he hasn't won an event. He's had something like six top ten finishes without winning one. And that puts pressure on the putting. Here's Bradley Hughes to go into the lead on his own once more. It's been uh, a more eclectic round. Brad Hughes' third shot to the 17th. Wants it close to wrap up a par. Yeah, good shot. So he'll come to the last, which he birdied last night, tied for the lead. I was talking to his caddy last night, and uh, he told me that one of the problems he's had in, in the States has been his chipping, and he's worked on his posture and his position, ball position, and getting a bit more weight on his left leg when he plays those shots, and he executed that beautifully there. Pass a Hughes at the 17th. He birdied the closing two holes last night when the conditions were pretty tough. Suddenly got up on Jack. Yeah, slippery putt across that green. Now, what a corker Brad Hughes played here last night to the 18th. Can he repeat it? Well, he's and got five on in hand, uh, Drew, and he's hit that to the right of the flag. And a little bit of unlucky break there coming down that slope in front of the green. He knows, walking up there, he's left himself with a very difficult shot to get par. You have to fashion wood and Lonard was Robert Carlson, the Swede, who shot 74 today. He's two under. Now, Brad Hughes going with a different tactic here because he's coming more from flag high. The other two coming in on an angle. He's got the putter out. Pretty dangerous shot because if it gets a bad bounce, it could end up back at his feet. But he knows this course, like the back of his hand, lives just up the road. Now, can he get the speed right? Well, uh, they really paid the price for going at that flag, which is, a, I like to call it a sucker pin. If you go at it and miss, big trouble. You need to be a good putt to retain a share of the lead. Seeing that is the fifth hardest today. With a senior likely to finish five, five, five. Yeah, but the difference, Renton, is the fifth, you know, the fourth hole rather, 358 metres, the 18th, 409 metres. So it just goes to show you, Link doesn't have a lot to do with it as we watch. I mean, this light ship. So Brad Hughes needs to hold this to retain a share of the lead. 
across the slope. It'll move from his left to right. Get a very good putt. It's a finishing bogey. 63-72. But I think he's probably half pleased that he's got that out of the way and he can now get on with the golf tournament after the hype around his course record yesterday.